Most companies claim that the pandemic accelerated their digital projects. Others say that digital projects were the only ones that have not been put on hold. As we learn, it's a lot more complicated than that. Some digital programs are going faster and others are, well, sidelined. Let's take a closer look at what's happening. It is true that many digital projects are thriving, even as the pandemic has slowed down IT investments in general. I spoke to, with clients and consultants alike and learned that while digital is top of mind, not all digital projects are created equal. It's important to review where digital transformation fits in the current economic climate. As customer relationships and supply chains got completely disrupted, so did revenues. Almost every business focused on revenue retention or even growth, if they could, and also getting costs in line with the change profitability picture. Some CFOs were thoughtful in their cost cutting, while others operated in sheer panic and stopped all projects. Successful companies quickly aligned their digital projects with the new strategic priorities and positioned their impact on three key pillars, customer retention, revenue growth, and cost containment. Often this was the first time the digital program became a leadership priority, and they were often asked to make an even bigger business impact than they had planned. This reaction was often the opposite of what digital projects experienced until then often relegated to perpetual pilots with limited executive support and unclear financial impact. I noticed five clear patterns why some digital programs scaled better than others in the current crisis. Number one, value orientation versus use case orientation. Strategic project managers moved away from justifying use cases and focused instead on measurable value impact. Digital leaders in the boardroom were asked the same question as everybody else. How much more revenue can you help generate or how much cost can you save? CIOs often signed up to millions in EBITDA gains, some coming from renegotiating supplier contacts and others from digital projects. Instead of just cutting budgets, which is not sustainable, many launched digital programs to attain the benefits. The whole discussion is moving from what is the ROI of the project to what's the maximum value that the project can create. Trend number two is no-code versus programmers. For many companies, the IT backlog of projects has become a major obstacle to growth. The crisis exposed a lack of speed in traditional IT shops that rely on talents in short supply, like developers and data scientists, especially when solution was needed in days and not months. The talent shortage further complicated the already terrible backlog of IT organizations. There have always been tools that require little to no programming, and these technologies are now being deployed widely. From marketing analytics to back office automation, users are solving their own problems with technology. What has formerly been viewed as shadow IT is becoming mainstream citizen development in increasingly decentralized IT environments. Trend three, specialized solutions versus generic capability. Time to value is the only mantra in the pandemic. Good enough is taking priority over perfection. Companies bring in more pre-built solutions instead of bespoke development efforts. Generic capabilities like development tools that can solve any and all problems are losing out to focus vendors and consultants that specialize. Instead of generic AI development, I've seen providers focus on narrow areas like manufacturing capacity planning AI or customer credit optimization AI. The impact of these solutions are much faster and much more likely to get momentum. Today, the only way to scale fast enough is by using somebody else's 80% solution rather than starting from scratch. In fact, I predict that starting from scratch in digital is dead for most businesses. Trend number four, from time and material consulting to risk sharing. 
The longest boom market in history was boon to open-ended consulting projects and fees. There seemed to be a lot more discussion now about results-based services, risk sharing, or even value-based rewards. There are consultants with a lot of experience managing to value, delivering early and often, and I predict they will thrive in such environments. In return, the results will be much more focused and more digital projects will maintain momentum and scale more. Risk sharing tend to produce much better financial outcomes anyway. And the last trend is from on-premise to cloud. Hard to believe that some companies still hesitated about cloud migration before the crisis. The pandemic stopped the last hurrah of on-premise systems. I have seen companies that would never go cloud before now completely shift. The cloud infrastructure providers have been ready for years, and now the buyers are finally migrating at scale. It is indicative that many of my private equity clients now have a thesis to cloudify everything, and cloud conversion of business applications is back in force. We also see how software companies that never finish cloud migration are getting penalized in the market. In summary, for digital projects to be successful today, they need to be value-focused, simple enough for end users, must solve specific business problems instead of any problem, and keep everything in the cloud. Finally, once and for all. Talk soon.